Barataria terrebone is very important habitat to lots of different kinds of birds that either spend all or part of their lives here. Elmer's Island and other barrier islands are particularly important. David Muth with the Jean Lafitte National Park and Preserve is here with us to tell us about birds. David. Well, as you said, uh, the Barataria terrebone just for the same reasons that it produces all of the uh, seafood, uh, all of the creatures that we've been talking about, those in turn uh, feed a, a wide variety of birds. And because the estuary is at the crossroads between the Gulf of Mexico and the interior of the continent of North America, it's also a very important place as a stopover habitat uh, for birds that are going to and from North America to the tropics, either to the Caribbean, Central America, or even as far as South America. Birds that fly across or around the Gulf of Mexico. So the estuary provides food for a wide variety of breeding birds. It provides wintering habitat for uh, millions of, of birds from farther north that breed in uh, the northern United States and Canada, ducks and geese. Uh, and uh, it provides, as I said, this stopover habitat. In fact, behind us on the beach are a flock of black terns which breed uh, in the uh, uh, prairie regions of the northern United States and Canada and winter as far south as the coast of South America. But each fall, uh, black terns stop here on beaches such as here at Elmer's Isle or, uh, and in the spring, they do the same thing on their return. We've seen lots of birds here today. David, can you tell us some about what we've seen? Well, we've seen uh, brown pelicans, which of course are the Louisiana state bird, and a, uh, a story that was quite a tragedy because, because of all of the uh, pesticides that uh, were poured into the Mississippi River system. Uh, brown pelicans, as well as lots of other birds that depend on fish, uh, were in serious trouble because of the buildup of, of pesticides and the failure of their eggs when they uh, tried to reproduce. So the Louisiana state bird, the brown pelican, actually died out in Louisiana. But uh, birds were brought in from Florida and now, uh, as you can see out here, there's a thriving population uh, with many, many thousands of nesting brown pelicans in Louisiana. We've seen the same recovery nationwide of other fish-eating birds from double-crested cormorants to white pelicans to bald eagles to ospreys uh, and all because of uh, regulation of, of harmful uh, pesticides in the environment. Other birds we've seen out here today, there's a flock of uh, red knots. This is another uh, long-distance migrant, some of the longest-distant migrants on the planet. They breed in the uh, high Arctic on the tundra and winter in southern South America, in Argentina, uh, and uh, fly uh, twice a year in the spring north and in the, in the fall to the south. And these beaches uh, on the Gulf Coast as well as on the Atlantic Coast are vital habitat for them during that migratory period. They have to consume a lot of food in order to make that, uh, that journey of many thousands of miles. Uh, we've also uh, looked at some of the other uh, smaller plovers. There are Wilson's plovers here, which actually breed on the barrier islands and on the uh, barrier beaches, such as here at Elmer's Island. Uh, there are semi-palmated plovers, which again are migrants uh, from uh, the Arctic, and many of, uh, many of them winter here, spend the entire winter here. So we're seeing a very good cross-section of the types of birds uh, that we found here. Uh, we saw some uh, magnificent frigate birds. Uh, this is a species that uh, is mostly confined to the tropics. Uh, and is a pelagic species. It means it spends most of its life at sea, but many, many thousands of them uh, spend the summer here uh, along the Louisiana coast in the Barataria Terrebonne and other estuaries in Louisiana. They don't breed here, uh, but uh, this is a very important place for them to, uh, uh, to, to feed uh, during, during the summer months. David, I can imagine that birds flying all the way from Central and South America are pretty exhausted by the time they get here. I understand even tiny hummingbirds make this journey. What do they find when they get here to our barrier islands? Well, that's a very important question. Uh, it is especially important for, for those birds that have specific habitat requirements. And of course, any forest bird 
flying across the Gulf of Mexico. It's 450 miles until you reach the Yucatan. Uh, so when they reach the coast uh, here in Louisiana, it's very important that they're able to find forest habitat and food. And uh, very often, if, if they've had a struggle, if they've come across under adverse weather conditions, they don't have the strength to continue inland to the vast forests uh, that are beyond the coastal zone. And so just narrow strips of coastal forests, such as our chenilles, as you can see behind us here, uh, become critically important for those, uh, for those migrants. And unfortunately, uh, these coastal areas are uh, prime development sites uh, and uh, much of the uh, forest habitat that used to grow on barrier islands and coastal uh, chenilles has disappeared. What is the word chenille that you're using? A chenille is an old French word used by the uh, first French uh, uh, inhabitants of Louisiana to describe a place of oaks. Chen is uh, the French for oak. And in the marshes and open bays of South Louisiana, there are actually very few trees. But wherever there's a little bit of high ground, uh, live oaks will grow. And, and the French called those places chenilles. And very often, that's an old beech ridge or something that's now stranded in the marsh because of changes in the, uh, in, in the way the Mississippi River deposits sediments along the Gulf Coast. And we have a chenille forest very close to here, do we not, on Grand Isle? That's right. There's a little bit of chenille forest left on Grand Isle. Even though Grand Isle is very highly developed, there's several tracts of important uh, chenille forest. And there's been a very strong effort uh, in the last several years uh, to preserve what's left of those woodlands, and they're very, very important woodlands, and, and we've had a lot of success. And that success uh, has translated into convincing private landowners uh, to plant trees uh, and to enhance chenille habitat all along the coast, and, and the estuary program has been very involved in that. Thank you, David.